Hi guys, and welcome to a, another episode of AM Daily Crypto. As always, I am Crypto Lissa, and with me is Xander Coin Miner. Behind us, you can see the NFT. Um, the this NFT is from Birds of a Feather on Ravenist, and it is created by. LSJIO7 on Twitter. And of course, links will be in the description below. Before we get started, guys, this episode is mainly about Russia, Ukraine, and what is going on over there in regards to crypto. This afternoon, morning, afternoon, I did an episode on other crypto news, and crypto was up, and now crypto is a little down right now. So as always, crypto goes up, crypto goes down. And with that being said, this is not financial advice. And please do your own research before jumping into any cryptocurrency. We also have our new website up and running, amdailycrypto.com. We have merchandise on there. And of course, you can subscribe, stay up to date on what's going on, maybe some bonus content over there. And if you like our content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We try to post as much as we can. However, we are parents of two young children. So we do it when we can. Perfect example. It is now 9 p.m. our time. Both of our kids are asleep. So we are doing this episode for you guys. Depending on where you are, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. And we also have Coin Tree. So if you would like to support us, we would love that. We and that will be in the description below. So with that getting started, guys, and everything out of the way, we will start this episode. And first up is Xander with a very fun article. How's it going, everybody? It's Xander here. Um yeah, this first uh, article from Crypto Potato that came out on March 1st by Dimitar Zunderdolf. Um, uh, well, let's hope nobody gets triggered. Um, okay, so let me get started. Hillary Clinton, uh oh, I can hear it, is disappointed that some crypto exchanges refuse to stop servicing Russians. Similar to the ECB's president, Hillary Clinton believes Russians could employ digital assets to bypass financial sanctions. Former U.S. presidential candidate Hillary Clinton criticized those cryptocurrency trading venues that refused to stop servicing Russian-based users. She once again opened that digital assets should be put under a regulatory framework. Right. Crypto should not become an escape hatch to Russia. Oh, now that's what we're going to we're gonna go there. Huh? And, miss, and miss the Russian invasion in Ukraine, Mikhailo Fedorov, the latter's vice prime minister, asked the leading digital asset platforms to freeze all Russian users' blockchain addresses. Well, ain't that about a you-know-what? According to the politician, the move would weaken Russia and aid Ukraine's defense. I don't understand how taking people's crypto it has anything to do with bullets flying in Ukraine. But I don't know. I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. In a recent interview for MSNBC, the former First Lady Hillary Clinton said she is disappointed that some cryptocurrency exchanges still provide services to such users. I was disappointed, quote, I was disappointed to see that some of the so-called crypto exchanges, not all of them, but some of them, are refusing to end transactions with Russia for some philosophy of libertarianism or whatever, end quote. Well, well, look at here. In her view, everybody should do as much as possible to isolate the Russian economic activity. Hmm. 
that pressure will absolutely impact Putin. No, it won't. It will impact the people, not Putin. I think the Treasury Department, I think the Europeans should look at how they can prevent the crypto markets from giving an escape hatch to Russia. She often. Among those exchanges she still that still service Russian-based traders are Binance and Kraken. Oh, shots fired. Those organizations are argue that most of their users were against the war, which is why did they have to answer to her in the first place? And it would be against the concept of the crypto industry to freeze their accounts. Good job, Binance and Kraken. That's right. Clinton had raised her concerns on Bitcoin and altcoins numerous times. In November, she claimed that the broad adoption could destabilize whole nations. Okay. As such, Biden, the Biden administration started realizing how important it is to apply regulations on the industry, Clinton concluded. I know it's all messed up over there and, you know... For Russia invading um, Ukraine, but I mean, just because one man's decisions doesn't mean all Russian people are bad. So I mean, let's let's look let's take a step back and, and, and really think about that before we start throwing fists and whatnot. Um, ECB president urges for regulations too. Earlier this week, Christine Lagarde, president of the European Central Bank, oh wow, here we go, argued that establishing rules in the cryptocurrencies universe is critically important at the moment. She explained otherwise. Russia could use the asset class to bypass financial penalties. There are all always criminal ways to circumvent prohibition which is why it's so critical to it uh, critically important that mika is pushed through a pushed through as quickly as possible so we have a regulatory framework other U, uh, european union members including germany spain and italy all of which slammed russia with financial sanctions are in favor of implementing a supervision on the sector According to them, criminals might use Bitcoin and the alternative coins in money laundering operations. Well, if you look at uh, the U.S. dollar, I mean, drug traffickers, when they do busts on the southern border here in the United States, I don't see Bitcoin. I see a lot of fiat in bundles and bags and stacks, pallets, um, you know. But here we go. But anyway, that's that's the end of this article. Um, basically, she's di uh, Hillary Clinton is disappointed that people aren't freezing Russian assets and whatever. I mean, that's not crypto, man. That's that's CBDC talk right there. But anyways, back to uh, crypto listen. Thank you for that article. And here is the next article. I actually read this article last night over at C3 Media and they were making jokes because of how this sounds. So Russia spur bank to leave the European market. And this is written by Dimitar Zanzarov. This was written yesterday. As a result of the economic sanctions against Russia, the largest financial institution in the country, Spurbank, will reportedly withdraw from the European market. The organization said its subsidiaries spend around European face large or subsidiaries spread around Europe face large cash outflows while the safety of its employees is threatened. Interestingly, Spurbank is one of the Russian banks that have displayed a pro-crypto stance over the past several months. Russia's economy seems to be taking a serious hit following the Western world's monetary penalties imposed on it. The cutoff from the global payment system, SWIFT, among other financial bans, 
caused a significant crash of the ruble. The measures also started affecting giant banks like Sberbank. According to a recent um, Rutgers report, the institution will no longer supply liquidity to its European subdivisions. However, Spurbank asserted it has sufficient capital and asset quality to pay all depositors. Quote, in, current, in the current situation, Spurbank has decided to leave the European market. The group's subsidiary banks have faced abnormal cash outflows and threats to the safety of its employees and branches, the bank stated. Earlier this week, the ECB ordered the closure of Spurbank's European arm, warning it faced failure due to a run on deposits after Russia invaded Ukraine. The bank has spread its operations to Austria, Germany, Croatia, Hungary, and other nations. Meanwhile, it has European assets worth over $14 billion. Nonetheless, Switzerland, which is not a part of the European Union, will not exclude Spurbank operations on its territory. At the end of 2021, the leading bank created a blockchain exchange trade fund ETF tracking prominent companies in the cryptocurrency industry, such as Coinbase and Galaxy Digital. This became the first such product in Russia, enabling traders to delve into digital asset into the digital asset universe without purchasing, storing, or selling tokens. The fund called SPUR, Blockchain Economy, trades under the ticker SBBE. It follows the uh, Euphemis Index uh, developed by the bank's investment subsidiary uh, SPUR CIB. The latter consists of entities producing hardware and software for mining cryptocurrencies and even companies that provide consulting services in the sector. Speaking on the matter was Evangi Zatev, General Director of General Director of Spurbank, who noted that direct investments in Bitcoin or alternative coins are associated with high risks. As such, the product would allow people to invest not in cryptocurrencies, but in companies that, quote, ensure the development of blockchain technologies. And back to you. Yeah, that's, that, thank you for that. That's an interesting article um, about Spurbank um, talking about how their product would allow people to invest not in crypto, but the companies that support crypto. I mean, that's interesting. So, um, moving on to the next one. Uh, this one for those uh, for XRP fans and so on. Uh, Ripple CEO explains why Russia can't use crypto to bypass financial sanctions. So the Ripple CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, explained why it would be hard for Russia to use crypto to evade global sanctions in the ongoing war with, with Ukraine. Crypto has, made a play, has played a major role in geopolitical tensions between Russia and Ukraine, with the latter receiving Bitcoin donations from across the world. There are concerns that Russia could use digital assets to mitigate growing sanctions. These concerns come off the back of recent strict economic sanctions imposed on Russia by Western nations, including barring this country's banks from accessing the SWIFT international payment system. Very, very important system right there. Uh, after rejecting propositions to block Russian crypto accounts, the digital asset space has witnessed mounting speculation. Most of it is about the broader cryptocurrency industry could suffer if global regulators impose heavy sanctions on such exchanges for which allegedly allowing Russians to use crypto pseudo pseudonymous nature to continue operate. I mean, you got projects. I mean, you got Zcash, um, 
Monero. You you know you got other cryptos that that could function no matter what. Um, Ripple CEO and co-founder Brad Garlyhouse recently took to his Twitter to explain why Russia can't use crypto to evade global sanctions. Backing earlier comments made by the company's general manager, um, Ashish Birla, on Monday, Garlyhouse noted that the crypto trading platforms work together with several banking partners that risk losing their licenses if a blacklisted individual bypasses even security measure in place. Um, I mean, I could see that happening with uh, some centralized exchanges. For example, they work with uh, the fiat off-ramps, uh, on-ramps like uh, Prime Trust, for example. That's that's a big one for like finance. Uh, I could see that. Um, then there's a tweet there. I mean, you guys can read through that. Um, according to Garley House, it, it was to prevent such incidents that cryptocurrencies established several stringent measures, including strict KYC or know your customer and anti-money laundering uh, policies. He further added, RippleNet, for example, has always been and remains today committed to not working with sanctioned banks or countries that are restricted counterparties. Ripple and our customer support and, you know, and enforce OF AC laws and KYC AML. Carly House pointed out that the argument that crypto is favored by criminals to launder funds is both outdated and tired. Yeah, it, it, it's getting old. That whole that whole thing. Fiat's been used for it, and nobody says anything about that. So, of course, instead of listening to responsible players who have been clear. They will abide by legal sanctions. Some pundits and media insist on continuing to paint crypto as the Silk Road. Oh, here we go. We're going back to that. Both an exceptionally outdated and tired argument, which simply doesn't hold true today, he concluded. And the last sentence here <laughs> backs up on just yesterday. Uh, former U.S. presidential candidate Hillary Clinton criticized crypto exchanges for the refusal to stop servicing Russian-based users, saying that she's disappointed. I don't remember ever asking what she thought about that. I don't think anybody cares. Anyway. But anyway, this article was uh, was by Mandy Williams, and it was uh, dated yesterday. So um, anyway, that's all I got for this one. Go ahead, Crypto, let's take over. So our next one is written by Andrew Thoravalas. This was written March 2nd, which was yesterday for those in the U.S. that are watching this on March 3rd. Federal Reserve Chairman says Russia-Ukraine conflict highlights need for crypto regulation. Jerome Powell, chairman of the Federal Reserve, recently testified in front of the House Financial Services Committee on the state of the economy and future monetary policy. Given the various sanctions placed on Russia during its conflict with Ukraine, he said that the conflict underscores the need for crypto regulation that he's advocated for months. Following his testimony on Wednesday, Powell was asked whether Russia could potentially use cryptocurrencies to bypass the slew of sanctions recently placed on the nation. Following its announcement of special military operations in Ukraine, Western nations have taken major measures to damage Russia's economy through a trade war. This includes export blocks on technology from the U.S. to Russia, alongside a massive cutoff of the Russian banks from SWIFT. The Ukraine-Russia conflict underscored the need for congressional action on digital finance, including cryptocurrencies, Powell responded. Quote, we have this 
uh, burgeoning industry, which has many parts to it. And there isn't in place the kind of regulatory framework that needs to be there, end quote. Since cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin allow for peer-to-peer cross-border transactions, they are difficult for uh, governments to enforce trade restrictions on. Western allies are already raising concerns over how Russians may take advantage of them during the conflict, including European Central Bank President Christine uh, uh, Lagarde. Powell also mentioned how crypto could be exploited by uh, nefarious actors like terrorists, further underscoring the need for adequate regulation. Though he has no intention to ban cryptocurrency like China, he and lawmakers have long acknowledged the money laundering risks presented by digital assets, especially stable coins. Regulators effectively have one major choke point to block or hinder crypto transactions exchanges. To better enforce sanctions, Ukraine officials have called on crypto exchanges to blacklist Russian addresses in order to sabotage ordinary users. However, some exchanges like Kraken and Binance, of course, are not on board citing the libertarian values that cryptocurrencies are supposed to represent. Hillary Clinton, as we've read in how many articles now, former first lady and U.S. presidential candidate expressed displeasure with their decision showing dismissiveness of their philosophy. She wishes that all parties would do as much as possible to damage Russia's economy at this time. That said, cryptocurrencies are proving beneficial to Ukrainians as well, with tens of millions of dollars being sent to the country through Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other assets. So what I am going to say about this is that many people in Russia are not for what is even going on in Ukraine. Some of the Russian military actually, I've read, don't know how true it is, um, don't even, didn't even know that they were like in war. They just thought it was like a military situation, like an exercise, military exercise. And, um, so it is very sad and it's sad on both sides, of course, because Putin is now dictating the world. Uh, well, not the world, but his country and pretty much hurting his people because many of his people do not want this to happen. But he's also hurting Ukraine and by a lot. And it's just it's a sad situation all the way around. Um, and that's just all I'm going to say on that subject. And with that one on to the next one, Xander. Yeah, well, you know, I'm definitely going to say about Hillary Clinton is she definitely is very, very upset that they're not blacklisting everybody over there, but, her and Bill had a great time in in Moscow. I mean, you guys can look that up on yourself, you know, for yourselves. But they, she, her, and, and Bill have a history in Russia, so she's one to talk. Um, anyway, this next article by uh, George Goryev, um, dated today, it talks about Ukraine backs down on airdrop plans. We'll, in it, we'll issue NFTs instead. That I don't understand why. But it says Ukraine backed down from its plans to do an airdrop to addresses who donated for its cause. Instead, the country is issuing non-fungible tokens. That's that's the long version of NFTs for, for those of you who don't know what that is. Um Ukraine will not be conducting an airdrop despite the confirmation the country issued earlier this week. Instead, the vice 
Prime Minister said they will be issuing NFTs instead. That's cool. Uh, much has been made of Ukraine's purported airdrop, the snapshot for which was supposed to happen today. However, um, Mikhailo, Mikhailo Federal, the country's vice prime minister and minister of digital transformation, interesting title, revealed that the country will not be conducting an airdrop after all. Uh, quote, after careful consideration, we decided to cancel airdrop. Every day, there are more and more people willing to help Ukraine to fight back the aggression. Instead, we will announce NFTs to support Ukrainian armed forces soon. We do not have any plans to issue any fungible tokens, said Federal. For what it's worth, the donations to Ukraine escalated after the country revealed its plans to conduct an airdrop. At the time of this writing, there is no further information on purported on the purported NFT drop, what it will look like or when it will take place. Yeah, this is kind of interesting how there's not really any information about it, just them coming out and saying they're going to give it an NFT to all the donors, but there's nothing. That's it. I mean, that's, that's an interesting article. But anyways... Um, yeah, that, that'd be cool. I'd, I'd be actually curious to see what the NFT would be. I mean, I have, uh, I can think about it. I mean, have an idea. But, uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on to the next one. Thank you for that. And this next one, Bill Miller says collapse of the Russian ruble is very bullish for Bitcoin written by Dimitar Zanzarov, legacy investor, fund manager, and philanthropist. Bill Miller believes that the financial sanctions imposed on Russia could cause Bitcoin's price to soar. He pointed out that gold is the only reserve asset the largest country by landmass controls on its own, meaning that BTC might gain traction in the days to come. The military conflict in Ukraine changed the tides in the financial world drastically. NATO and the EU declared economic war, war on Putin's regime. Uh, the USA, UK, Germany, and many others cut their monetary connection with Russia and excluded the many Russian banks from the major payment system of SWIFT, as we have read in several other articles. As a result of those sanctions, the ruble plummeted over 25% while Russian citizens started looking for alternative financial instruments to preserve their savings. Bitcoin trading volumes in the region spiked to record levels. In, in a recent interview for CNBC, the former chairman of Leg Mason Capital Management, Bill Miller, outlined that Russia keeps 16% of its reserves in dollars and 32% in euros. Those assets are managed by, quote, people who want to do them harm, end quote. He further stated that the only part of their reserves, which other nations cannot control, is gold, which is at 30 or 22%. According to Miller, the, these metrics are very bullish sign for Bitcoin. This is from Squawk Box on CNBC. If you hit play on that, if you are reading this article, it will talk about that. He further pointed out BTC's limited supply, which makes it a hedge against inflation. Commenting on altcoins, he said they are much different than the primary cryptocurrency and investors should view them as venture assets. Despite his skeptical BTC opinion in the past, the American has turned into a keen supporter of the primary cryptocurrency recently. In May last year, he argued that investing in it is safe even during price drops. In fact, traders should 
find it more attractive when the value has decreased. Quote, if I like something at higher prices, it is a safe bet I will like it even more at lower prices, end quote. Several months later, he made a somewhat interesting comparison between Bitcoin and gold. In his view, the digital asset resembles the luxurious par sports car Ferrari, while the precious metal is old fashioned like a horse and buggy. That's actually a really pretty funny comparison. Earlier this year, the legacy investor admitted he had allocated 50% of his portfolio to Bitcoin. That is pretty interesting, I would say. And we are on to the next article with Xander. Yeah, um, yeah, that was a good article. I mean, um, I wonder if uh, uh, SHIB holders feel the same way about lower prices and, or anybody that's dealing with an altcoin that just started. I mean, I wonder if that's true. Oh, yeah, I bought it at the top, but I love it, and now it's lower. Yeah, I don't know about that. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the Devere Group CEO says the Russian Ukraine war can push Bitcoin to 50k soon. I mean, we were at like 60 some, so I don't know what 50,000 is. The the war pushed many individuals to look for financial alternatives which could drive Bitcoin to 50k by the end of the month. Why not tomorrow? Nigel Green, CEO of Devery Group, believes that the Russia Ukraine conflict can could be the catalyst that propels a surge for the BTC's price. The exec suggests that Bitcoin reaching 50K by the end of March is not out of the question. Well, we've been there before, so I don't see why it would be. Despite the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the peace uncertainty across Europe, Bitcoin's price started climbing recently. The asset's USD value is up by more 15% in the last five days. See, we might even get there a lot quicker. As many argue that this increase is a result of financial sanctions imposed on Russia and the following crash of the ruble. A supporter of that idea is the CEO of the financial advisory firm, DeVere Group, Nigel Green. He often that the military conflict has caused significant financial upheaval in companies, individuals, and government agencies started looking for alternatives to the traditional monetary systems. As banks close, quote, as banks close, ATMs run out of money, threats of personal savings being taken to pay for the war, and the major international payment system SWIFT is weaponized. Among other factors, the case for a viable decentralized borderless tamper-proof, unconfiscatable monetary system has been laid bare. Yeah, it's called Bitcoin, people. Jeez. Assuming the Western world keeps imposing penalties on rate on Russia, Bitcoin might tap 50K by the end of the month, Green forecasted. However, he said it's too early to believe that the primary cryptocurrency could reach its all-time high of nearly 70,000 registered in November 2021. It is worth noting that the Bear Group CEO has been quite accurate in his previous forecasts. Last summer, he predicted that Bitcoin would hit or even surpass its all-time high of 65K by the end of 2021. So is Nigel Green true? You know, is he going to make is he going to make his prediction come true or what? I mean, I don't know. Leave a comment down below and let us know what you think about what this guy's saying. Digital assets have been involved in the Russian-Ukrainian war dispute as numerous companies and individuals donated crypto to aid Ukraine's defense. Contributions surpassed 35 million while some of the renowned people that took part include Polkadot's founder, Gavin Wood. He sent 5 million worth of DOT to the Ukrainian government. Apart from Polkadot, the authorities accepted donations in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Tether. 
Yesterday, Mikhail Fedorov, Vice PM and Minister of Digital Transportation of Ukraine, added Dogecoin and Solana. Wow. What about Shiba Inu? Let's throw that in the mix, too. To the list of cryptocurrencies that can be sent as contributions. Nevertheless, many expressed concerns that Russia could employ the asset class as well and bypass financial sanctions implemented by the West. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, though, explained with why such a scenario is hard to occur. You know what? They could also use uh, uh, Ravencoin. That's that's the same thing as uh, that's similar to that of Bitcoin. So I mean, Ravencoin could be added to that list as well. In in his view, cryptocurrency exchanges are highly professional and work with banking partners. Like I was telling you guys earlier, they have established several stringent measures, including strict know your customer KYC and anti money laundering policies to prevent bad actors from using services. But what about that couple that stole all those Bitcoin? They were using these same exchanges, KYC and everything. And check it out. I mean, just, I don't know if we have a link to that, but that article or that story says a lot. But anyways, moving on. Thank you for that. And our last article of the day, that is the... Um, latest one so this was written at 1404 on march 3rd written by dimitar zanzaroff usa dfs to use blockchain to strengthen sanctions enforcement against russia the department of financial services or dfs will use blockchain analytics technology to build strengthen the enforcement of the sanctions against Russia. Specifically, the effort will be to detect if Russian individuals try to bypass the imposed penalties. The Department of Financial Services oversees numerous key programs and initiatives concer concerning the monetary sector. As a result of the growing conflict in Ukraine, it will expand its effort towards Russian citizens too. According to a recent statement, the DFS will use blockchain technology to monitor if the financial sanctions applied to Russia are appropriately executed. It will also observe whether some individuals seek a backdoor to avoid embargoes. At, uh, Adrian Harris, superintendent at the agency, predicted that bad actors will try to evade sanctions through the transmission of digital currencies. As such, quote, it is imperative that we have the ability to monitor transactions and exposure in real time, she outlined. Harris also asserted that the DFS will coordinate its operations with federal and other state regulators. Their joint efforts must ensure the full weight of our regulatory regime is brought to bear in the fight to protect Ukraine, the executive concluded. Speaking on the matter was also Kathy Hochul, governor of New York State. The politician stated New Yorkers are following the situation in Ukraine with fear and outrage. And in response, we are taking further action. In her view, the sanctions against Russia are one way to destabilize it. And the U.S. will continue enforcing such penalties in response to the unwarranted attack. I don't know what the governor of New York has to even do with this, but okay. Prior to the military conflict between Russia and Ukraine, all eyes were on the COVID-19 pandemic. 
And while the health disaster was spreading rapidly around the world in 2020 and 2021, the vaccination campaigns lessened its impact. However, bad actors took the opportunity to smuggle, smuggle medical products and compromise the program. Earlier this year, the Asia-based medical service, services company Zuling Pharma developed a blockchain platform to improve its vaccine tracking service and prevent accidents in this field. Once it's once it integrated the technology, the information became auditable in real time. That's what blockchain does, people. You blockchain doesn't lie. It's done in real time started offering instant results and did not require an, an intermediary. Daniel La Laverick, vice president at Zuling Pharma, noted that blockchain technology enabled users to verify the authenticity, which it also does that, and the route of the vaccines. Patients can scan the 2D data matrix on the product packaging to verify key product information like expiry date, temperature, and providence through its app powered by blockchain. This is what blockchain does, guys. It is a major, major player, can cut out any kind of fraud done in real time, no questions asked. We can track it. So this is wonderful. I love that little ex excerpt at the end. And if you have made it this far with us, thank you. We appreciate you. If you could like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, we would appreciate it because we are trying to grow this channel. And if you want to donate to us, you can donate to us through Cointree. We are also very active on Twitter and Discord. If you want us to cover something, uh, DM us, find us on Discord, leave a comment below. We love comments. We encourage comments. So with all of that being said, guys, just as a reminder, not financial advice, anything we say is our own opinion. And as such, treat it as such. Do your own research. And we hope you have a good day and encode you trust, guys.